I'm what you call a collector of bootleg Pokemon games. Pokemon Diamond, Pokemon Jade, Pokemon Chaos Black, etc. It's amazing the frequency of which you find them at pawn shops, Goodwill, flea markets, and such. They're genuinely fun, even if they're unplayable, which they often are. The mistranslations and poor quality make them unintentionally humorous. I've been able to find most of them that I've played online. But there's one I haven't seen any mention of. I bought it at a flea market about five years ago. The game started with the familiar Nudarno and Gengar intro of Red and Blue version. However, the press start screen had been altered. Red was there, but the Pokemon did not cycle through. It also said Black version under the Pokemon logo. Upon selecting a new game, the game said the game started Professor Oak speech. Upon selecting new game, the game started the Professor Oak speech, and it quickly became evident that the game was essentially Pokemon Red version. After selecting your star and you'd look at the Pokemon, you had an addition to Bulbasaur, Charmander, or Squirtle. Another Pokemon. Ghost. The Pokemon was level 1. It had the sprite of a ghost that you encountered in the Lavender Town Tower before obtaining the Silver Scope. You had one attack. Curse. I know that there is a real move named Curse, but the attack did not exist in Generation 1, so it appears it was hacked in. Defending Pokemon were unable to attack Ghost, it would only say they were too scared to move. When the move Curse was used in the battle, the screen would cut to black. The cry of a defending Pokemon would be heard, but it was distorted, played a much lower pitch than normal. The battle screen would then reappear and the defending Pokemon would be gone. If used in a battle against a trainer, when the Pokeballs representing their Pokemon would appear in the corner, they would have one fewer Pokeball. The implication that the Pokemon died. What's even stronger is that after defeating a trainer and seeing Red received 200 Poke Dollars for winning, the battle commands would appear again. If you selected Run, the battle would end as it normally does. You could also select Curse. If you did, upon returning to the overworld, the player's sprite would be gone. After leaving and re-entering the area, the spot where the trainer had been would be replaced with the tombstone like the ones at Lavender Town. The move Curse was not usable in all instances. It would fail against Ghost Pokemon. It would also fail if it was used against trainers that we'd have to face again. Such as your rival, or Giovanni. It was usable in your final battle against him, however. I figured this was the gimmick of the game, allowing you to use the previously uncatchable ghost. Because Curse made the game so easy, I essentially used it throughout the whole adventure. The game changed quite a bit after defeating the final four. After viewing the Hall of Fame, which consisted of Ghost and a couple of Pokemon I used for HMs, the screen cut to black. A box appeared with the words many years later. It then cut to Lavender Tower. An old man was standing, looking at tombstones. You then realized this man was your character. The man moved to only half the speed of your normal walking speed. You no longer had any Pokemon with you, not even Ghost, who up to this point was impossible to move from the depositing in the PC. The overworld was entirely empty. There were no people at all. There were still the tombstones of the trainers that you would use Curse on, however. You could go pretty much anywhere in the overworld at this point. Through Though your movement was limited by the fact that you had no Pokemon to use HMs, and regardless of where you went, the music of Lavender Town continued of an empty loop. After wandering for a while, I found that if you go through Jacob's Cave, one of the cuddled bushes that normally blocks a path on the other side is no longer there, allowing you to advance and return to Palatown. Upon entering your house, going to the exact tile where you start the game, the screen would cut to black. Then a sprite of a Caterpie appeared. It was replaced by a Weedle, then a Pidgey. I soon realized, as the Pokemon progressed from Rathata to Blastoise, that they were all the Pokemon that had used Curse on. After the end of my rival's team, a youngster appeared, then a bug catcher. These were the trainers that I have cursed. Throughout the sequence, the Lavender Town music was playing. 
but it was slowly decreasing in pitch. By the time your rival appeared on the screen, it was a little more than a demonic rumble. After it cut to black, a few moments later, the battle screen suddenly appeared. Your trainer sprite was that. Your trainer sprite was now that of an old man, the same one as the one who teaches you how to catch Pokemon in Viridian City. Ghosts appear on the other side, along with the words, Ghost wants to fight. You couldn't use items, and you had no Pokemon. If you tried to run, you couldn't escape. The only option was fight. Using fight would immediately cause you to use struggle, which didn't affect the ghost, but did chip off a bit of your own HP. When it was ghost turn to attack, it would simply say, die. Da, da. Eventually, when your HP reached a critical point, Ghost would finally use Curse. The screen cut to black a final time. Regardless of the button that you pressed, you were permanently stuck in the black screen. At this point, the only thing you could do was turn the game away off. When you played again, New Game was the only option. The game had erased the file. I played through this hack game many, many times. Every time the game ended with this sequence. Several times I didn't even use Ghost at all. Though he was impossible to remove from the party. In this case. In these cases, it did not show any Pokemon or trainers and simply cut to the cinematic battle with Ghost. I'm not sure what the motives were behind the creator of this hack. It wasn't widely distributed, so it was presumably not for momentary gain. It was very well done for a bootleg. It seems like he was trying to convey a message, though it seems I am the sole receiver of this message. I'm not entirely sure what it was. The inevitability of death, the pointless of it. Perhaps he was simply trying to morbidly inject death and darkness into a children's game. Regardless, this children's game made me think. <laughs> it just made me cry. <laughs> I 